Hey everyone, it's Tom with On Campus College Planning. So, super, super common question we're getting right now is about the ACT with, with some schools, a lot of schools going test optional, and it can be kind of an involved conversation. So I really want to direct this one towards the class of 2022. So that's you juniors. So if you're a junior, and if you're a sophomore or a parent of a sophomore or freshman, you can listen along as well. But we created this, this nice and easy sort of flow chart to help make a really uh, complex uh, decision process a little bit more simple and what I want to do is blow it up and, and I'm going to post a PDF of this below so if you're watching this on Facebook which is where you are right now and it might be hard to see this I tried to blow it up a little bit but you can download this as soon as I'm done and I post that and this should make it a lot easier for you so first thing to understand is uh, up in up in the language could it help you right so it's not as much of a question of do I have to have an ACT score or not it's could it help me and I think about this in the same way that I think about a lot of athletes who spend a lot of extra time uh, just wor working on their on their swing a little bit or you know stroking the threes or whatever now that might be a lot more fun than the ACT but you're trying to get a little bit of a competitive edge to get you up to varsity or to move you into all conference or to to increase your chances that you can play it at the next level so it's not about do I have to do those extra things it's would that help me if I put in the effort would there be some possible gain to this so the first question is really to start here juniors have you taken an official ACT and I've been hearing from a few juniors who we prep for some good news so far pretty excited about that but if you haven't taken one if you say no what you really should do is sit down and take a full length practice exam okay I know you might have taken a pre ACT I know you might have taken an ACT Aspire I know we got some schools coming up uh, doing the PSAT PSAT is a different beast it's not an ACT predictor and even those other two they're kind of smaller watered down versions so I would highly encourage you to sit down for three and a half hours on a Saturday morning or a Wednesday if you don't have school or a Monday if you don't have school or whatever it might be and take a full length practice exam under simulated test conditions we do that here all the time and if you'd like to to come here and do that we'll do that for free give you your scores let you know how you did make some recommendations all of that so that's the first question and if you say uh, I haven't done that then you should be thinking about this before you move on to the next now let's say you have taken the uh, ACT and let's say you got a 24 okay that's fantastic it's better than average that's a really nice score and chances are you're probably going to be taking it as a junior later on if you're a junior at a public high school in the state of Wisconsin you're going to take it on March 9th circle that date March 9th moms put it into the Google Calendar right away so then the next question is is your your college shopping cart finalized and we use that term shopping cart a lot not because we like to shop around here but but it's the idea that as I'm looking at colleges I'll, I'll know some that I, I'm absolutely sure I want to apply to and I'll, I'll put that in my shopping cart but I, I can't actually apply as a junior I don't know of any colleges in America where you can submit an application as a junior so what I'm really doing is putting things up in that shopping cart and adding more and taking away etc as I learn more and more to get ready for summer and early fall this time exactly of my senior year so if your shopping cart is finalized then we can come down here I'm going to come back to that in just a second if your shopping cart is not finalized I highly encourage you not to just sit and wait for some college to come to your doorstep and hand you brochures and tell you all about them all right you gotta you gotta get out there and start looking now that might be um, a virtual visit on a campus that might be um, actually going to a campus I know some families who said forget it man we're just gonna drive there and look around we want to see what the campus feels like the city etc even if we can't take an actual tour that's fantastic everybody gets to do it their own way but this is the time especially juniors I know you don't have a lot of homework some of you this is the time you should be doing that right now jumping into college websites contacting admissions people if you're if you're not even sure what your target is how are you going to know about these questions down here and if you don't know how to get started come in for a free consult let's just start talking about some colleges kind of throw some things on the table uh, help you learn all you can in in a free hour and we'll just learn more about the college search process okay so let's go back here and let's say that we've got most of our colleges finalized or our list is finalized now we're going to need to look school by school are test scores required for admissions or merit aid because those could be two separate questions getting in is one thing getting a merit aid scholarship is a different 
Now the FAFSA is going to go live in, in just a few days here. We're going to be doing a bunch of training on Facebook next week and posting some blogs and things like that. I'll be talking about that a little bit later in the week. But what I want you to know about that is the FAFSA isn't really connected to Merit Aid. Okay? Merit Aid are scholarships that you earn usually for great grades and historically for good ACT or SAT scores. So you need to look into that too because there's a difference between just getting in and lowering the cost. So that really means that I'm checking each school, school by school, and a super, super easy way to do this is, is to create a quick account on a website called collegedata.com. It's something I use all the time with my students and just for my own benefit. Uh, it's a very, very accurate uh, website and it's just pulling a lot of data from other colleges, what they call their common data set, which is a really, really long uh, document that you don't want to be looking for. And it's usually a faster way to find things like the middle ACT range and, and also average GPAs or a range of GPAs. It's faster to do it there than on the college website. And part of the why is because colleges, colleges never want to tell anyone no. And they don't want to say, well, here's our numbers and this is what you need, et cetera. They're like, well, we'll think about it. It's a holistic process. And that's good. And I believe them. But they don't want to come down hard and fast. Are you in? Are you not? And they really don't know at that point. So go to college data. And then if I've got a school, let's say I've got, here we go, Wisconsin. Okay. Go Badgers. Oh, that's not going to stick. So if I've got Wisconsin, their middle 50% ACT range is from 27 to 32. That means half of the kids who applied and were accepted last year, whether or not they chose to be Badgers, came in between a 27 and a 32. Half of the kids. So a quarter were below that and a quarter were above that. Okay? 27 to 32. That's, that's really, those are some high numbers. That's, that's one of the, it, it is one of the most selective public institutions in the country, all right? In the world for that matter. Hard to get into, right? So if, if I'm looking at this and thinking, well, I got that 24, so clearly I'm, I'm below that middle 50% range. Now it says red, so it's just a temporary stop. Your application, if you're gonna apply right now, let's say you've got a 4.0 or a 3.9. You know, they have an average GPA last year of 3.86 for admitted students. So if I'm at that or above, and I'm below in my ACT range, I may not want to submit it because UW-Madison now for the next two years is going to be test optional, right? Um, if I do come in in that 50 to 75 percent range, so like say a 29 or higher, uh, that could probably help me. And what I'm thinking about is can I move over into the green range where I am like closer to a 32 or even above just to kind of stack the deck in my favor and increase the chances that I get to choose whether I'm going to UW-Madison versus them telling me no. Okay, so that's part of the process and it really comes down to school by school and that's where you need to do your homework and it, it really isn't that difficult folks to get just a ballpark idea from that website based on ACT and grades and other factors. How do I stack up? Is this a target? Is it a reach? Is this a safety school? Okay, but you got to do that. You can't just say um, no test scores are required for any of my colleges, so I'm done. Okay, here's why. If you say, uh, well, I can apply to College X, but they don't require an ACT, so I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to take it once, and I'm not going to try very hard, and I'll be done. Let's look at this. Even if not required, a strong ACT score may help. Okay? Here's, here's an example. So we're going to go down south just a little bit. We're going to go to Mizzou. Okay? I like the colors. Very nice. And I'm going to put this up. This is merit aid, okay? Again, scholarships that come that have nothing to do with your financial aid or your fan, financial need, your income, assets, whatever. They're solely tied to, in this case, GPA and ACT score. So for out-of-state students, and most of you watching this would be an out-of-state student from Missouri. I know a few of you who wouldn't be, though. So they have the Mark Twain Non-Resident Award. That's nice. I kind of like that. I got a picture of a guy with a mustache and a white suit. I like it. Here's my SAT numbers. Here's my ACT numbers. So let's say you got that 395 and you're rocking it and you have your 24 and you're going to apply to Madison. You're like, eh, I, I don't think I want to submit that score. Okay, well, maybe you want to try to get it up into the range, but if you end up with the 24, I would probably withhold that. If you're at a 395 or a 4.0, something like that, and you're applying to a school like Missouri, well, you get uh, the level two award, which is $7,000 a year. 
Thanks very much, University of Missouri. I appreciate that. That can go a long way towards uh, gas and college sweatshirts and pizzas and things like that. I mean, seriously, $7,000, that's per year. And all you gotta do is keep up some, some decent grades. So that's 28 grand that they're knocking off on the cost of four years. However, if you were to prep, and let's say you go from a 24 to 28, and I'm using a four point game because here on campus, historically that's been the average increase. 98% of the kids that we work with go up, uh, and they go up an average of four points. So now you went from a 24 to a 28. And maybe you did that through our self-paced online course. Maybe you signed up for one of our in-person ACT classes come up for December. Uh, maybe you worked with myself or Stephanie or Hillary in a one-on-one -on -one coaching program. Uh, but you go up your four points and now you're at level one. Well, the math here is that's about a $10,000 difference. Hmm, that seems like that would cover the cost of test prep and, and my time and effort. Yeah, and let's multiply that by four. That's the best math problem you've ever done. So that's a potential savings of $40,000. We've got, we got stories all over the place from, from people who have used Merit Aid to really reduce costs and open up a lot of options out of state and private schools as well. So that's just one example, folks, but it really comes down to looking at this in greater detail. So again, I'm thinking about this. Have I taken it yet? No. Well, I should just go ahead and take it, right? Let's, let's get this out there. It's, sometimes it's kind of like stepping on the scale on January 1st. It's a little bit scary and I may not like the numbers, but at least I'll know, okay? And then I can create an action plan to take steps forward. Is my shopping cart finalized? No. Time to start thinking about it and then double back. And for the ones that you are sure about or pretty sure about, go ahead and work through this process, okay? Come down here, look to see if it's required or not for admissions, and then look to see if it's required or not for merit aid, because that could be a game changer, and figure out where you are on this little continuum, and then see, can I move it over into the next level, okay? So tomorrow, I'm gonna be talking, one second. Tomorrow I get another chart. Hillary created these and they're brilliant. I've got one for class of 2021. Should you include your ACT score for college applications? Again, I'll post uh, I'll post the other one that we just did in a PDF. And by all means, give us a call or, or come in for a free consult if you're still not sure about this. Why wouldn't we start thinking about this now, folks? Instead of just making a binary yes or no, why don't you look into this a little bit? We can help you with that. Hopefully just this chart helps you understand what some of the options might be and how to work through this in a process. This could really help you out. And if it doesn't, then you'll know, all right? But at least you'll know. Until then, I'm Tom for On Campus College Planning. Go College.